Hello everyone and welcome to episode 28 of Microsoft Canada's online MTCNA tutorials. This video is part 2 of our introduction to the DHCP server in Router OS and shows you how the DHCP server and client work together. In this session, we'll learn about the dynamics of DHCP lease, take a look at the log records of DHCP server and client and finally go over the issue of lease management and its criteria. You remember that on our home lab, we set up a DHCP server on the class access point that is R1 and configured a basic DHCP client on the trainee router that is R2, meaning that R2 is going to receive IP host information from R1. By referring to the DHCP server entry in Microtech's official reference, you can read about the DHCP lease in router OS. As you can tell, the lease submenu is used to manage server leases. Leases in router OS can be both dynamic and static, and the way a lease is allocated is like this. If a server lease is unused, its state will be waiting. In the next step, if a DHCP client requests an IP address, the server will choose an address. Then, if the address in question is assigned statically, the lease is offered to the client and then bounds with its corresponding lease time. However, if the address is given dynamically, the server will first send a ping to the chosen address. If the address does not respond, this means that the address is available, the lease is offered to the client, and then bounds with its relevant lease time. Also, in situations other than the non-responsive ping, the lease becomes busy in which case the client will try again later. Based on this reference, it is important to remember that for the assignment of IP host information, the DHCP client acts first by sending a broadcast message, and since the DHCP client does not know whether a DHCP server exists or not, it sends its broadcast to 255.255.255.255. The request of the DHCP client includes several pieces of information, including a randomly generated ID number, a message flag, the DHCP client's MAC address, the type of the message, the host name, that is the router identity, and the client ID. Once received, the server responds with a bunch of information, including the client's new IP address, the DHCP server's address, message type, address time or the lease time, subnet mask, default gateway, and the DNS servers. This is the overall back and forth between the DHCP client and the DHCP server. Now let's see this dynamic in practice. For this purpose, we'll put the Winbox windows of our two routers side by side. As previously mentioned, we have a DHCP server on the WLAN1 to class interface of R1 and a DHCP client on the WLAN1 to class AP interface of R2. Since our server and client are set up properly, as soon as we enable them both, the DHCP client briefly goes into searching mode and quickly receives its IP host information from the server you can see that the DHCP client receives an IP address as well as the lease time. By opening up the DHCP server, you'll see that this server titled DHCP1 that has been set on the WLAN1 to class is giving IP addresses with a lease time of 365 days from its DHCP pool. By referring to the leases tab, you can see the respective lease of the IP address provided which includes the assigned IP address, MAC address and client ID of the DHCP client, the relevant DHCP server, the router identity of the active host, the lease time, and the status of the lease, which is bound. You have also cut the D flag on the left, which means that this address has been assigned dynamically. To make this lease static, you can either open up the lease window and click on Make Static, which will immediately erase the dynamic flag, or alternatively, manually create a new lease by first inputting the IP address of your choice. Then go to the wireless menu of the trainee router, open the WLAN1 to class AP interface and find the MAC address of that interface in order to copy it in the MAC address field. Then choose the DHCP server from the server menu and click OK to create a static lease. Here you can see that this static lease is currently unused. Therefore, According to the reference, its status is waiting. To use this lease, we'll simply click on the Release and Renew buttons on the DHCP client and the lease quickly becomes bound and is assigned to the trainee router. To check that this lease is working properly, you can open it up 
change its address from 10001 to 10002 and click apply. Once you click on release and renew again, you can see that the address given to the trainee router changes accordingly. Now to get into more details, we'll refer to our router's logs and in order to receive the logs from DHCP activities, we'll refer to the system menu and the logging submenu and using the add button, you can add the DHCP log action on both routers. At this time, both the DHCP client and server are disabled and as you can see, the log menus show nothing. We'll first enable the DHCP server on R1 and also open the leases submenu to see the ensuing activities there. Next, we enable the DHCP client on R2. As soon as we do that, a list of activities show up on our log windows and a lease is dynamically created. And now, let's get into the details of our logs and see the DHCP client and server take turns to communicate the necessary information. First, as we said previously, the DHCP client enters the selecting state and sends a discover broadcast with a randomly generated ID number to 255, 255, 255, 255. This broadcast includes a broadcast flag, the client IP address, which is 0000 for now, the client's MAC address, the message type, a range of requested parameters including subnet mask, default gateway, and so on, the router identity, and the client ID. Next, the DHCP server receives that discovery broadcast from the random ID number and MAC address, including all the pieces of information and requests. Since a lease was not available, the DHCP server creates one. Then, as this address is being given dynamically, a ping is sent to the address chosen, that is 10001. Since that address does not respond, it is chosen by the DHCP server. At this stage, the DHCP server now sends its offer to the client, addressing the client with the same identity information but now including other content as well, including the signed IP address and the server IP address in an offer message, as well as the server ID, the lease time in seconds, the subnet mask, default gateway, and DNS servers. Here, the DHCP client receives this offer from the DHCP server with all the information given, and next, the DHCP client enters the requesting state, replying to the DHCP server with a request to acquire the information that has just been offered. The DHCP client sends this request to the DHCP server via a request message, but this time, as you can see, it is directing its request at the server ID and assigned address that was just announced by the DHCP server. Going back to the DHCP server, it has now received the main request from the DHCP client with the same information that was included in the request. As a result, it offers the lease that was requested by the DHCP client, assigns the IP address of 10001 to the trainee router, and then follows up by sending an acknowledgement message to the DHCP client to confirm the allocation of the IP address. In the end, the DHCP client gets the acknowledgement message, receives the IP address from the DHCP server, and finally enters the bound state, meaning that the allocation of the address is final and the DHCP client now has its IP host information. Okay, so now that we have seen how the IP address and the lease is offered, let's talk about lease management. To determine the lease time, there are three main criteria. First, how many users you have. Second, how long do you wish to keep their lease alive? And third, how long do you wish to keep their activities as a record on your network? Let's imagine two different networks. One is the wireless network of a restaurant with 150 seats in total and you estimate that each person sits at their table for almost two hours on average. The other is a government office with a fixed number of employees who spend eight hours at their desk every day. In the first scenario, you probably want to keep the lease time short because you want your IP addresses to be available as soon as a person leaves the premises. Therefore, with a large IP pool and a lease time of one minute, you serve your customers while they're there, but the allocated IP address will be available again one minute after the customer goes away. But at the office, you have a fixed number of employees and computers, so there is no need to have a large IP pool, nor do you need to keep those addresses free, 
so you can have a small number of IP addresses that are kept alive for the whole year. Of course, for purposes such as advertisement or security, you can increase the time that you keep client records on your network. To manage the lease time, you can easily go to the DHCP server window, open up your DHCP server settings, and set the lease time to your desired duration. When you click apply, the lease time of the DHCP server changes, and by clicking release and renew on the DHCP client, you can see that the lease time of the client is adjusted as well. Now, with a lease time of one minute, you can see that the DHCP client log is now showing much more activity. This is because the client is sending a message to the DHCP server every 30 seconds or so to reset the lease time and tell the server that it's still alive on the network to maintain its IP host information. Now, if we go to the wireless menu of the trainee router and disable the WLAN 1 interface, which resembles a client leaving the network, as the lease time nears its end, the DHCP server tries to extend it. However, as it understands that the client is no longer available on the network, it announces that the IP address lease is expired and therefore removes the lease from the list. Anyway, this is how the DHCP server and client work on the class 1 network. For practice, we recommend you apply the same situation in the LAN network between your PC and the trainee router and see what happens. As always, thank you so much for watching. Please like this video and subscribe to our channel and feel free to send your questions in the comment section.